Hi there, this is Carl Irwin, and this is a short tutorial to demonstrate uh, the setup to uh, score to picture from MuseScore 3.6. As you know, MuseScore uh, 4 is out, uh, and it has dropped Jack Transport, uh, and that is unfortunate for those of you that were uh, sequencing your film score in notation and uh, sequencing uh, direct to picture using MuseScore and the Jack Transport and a video player. Uh, the most common video player was XJDO that people were using uh, before the new version came out. Um, this is going to be a tutorial to show you another way uh, using Blender. So in order to do what we're going to try here, we need to first open up uh, MuseScore 3.6. So I have uh, MuseScore 3.6 uh, installed alongside 4.0, and um, I use this for this purpose uh, so that I can still do my video syncing. I look forward to a day when a MuseScore 4 will have some kind of video sync. Unfortunately, I haven't heard them talking much about that possibility, so I don't. I'm I'm not terribly optimistic about that coming up anytime soon. Until that time comes, you will either have to. Uh, do the old-fashioned kind of Stone Age uh, way, which is to use time code uh, and then uh, make a hit list that uh, sequences or that uh, synchronizes to the time code, and then do the mathematics that align your measures to that time code. And I have a tutorial on the new channel that uh, talks about how to do that. You can check that out. Um, until that point, that's what you'll have to do, uh, or you'll have to come here. So this uh, tutorial is about coming here to 3.6. As I said, this uh, uh, capability to use a jack has been around for quite some time for MuseScore. If we go to Preferences, we go to Import Outport I.O., and you'll see that we want to have Jack Audio Server selected and select all of these options down here so that we're using Jack Transport and also the MIDI and audio output. And we'll hit OK. So that will always be there by default once you select that. And we're just going to use a default page here. I'm going to set this to continuous view so we can kind of see a continuous timeline. Um, the second thing that we're going to do is open up Blender, but I'm not going to open up the current version of Blender, which is Blender 3.x, 3. and on. That's the latest version. Uh, I find, and, and now this does work with Blender 3.0, don't get me wrong. Uh, however, I found that the sequencers uh, play a little bit more nicely in terms of selecting very specific starting points if you're using one of the previous versions of Blender. So I actually have been holding on to, for quite some time, uh, Blender... 2.79. This is the last version before Blender uh, 3. Uh, and this is the one I held on to. And uh, we're going to open this up. And uh, what we want to do is this is true for both versions of Blender. You're going to go to File. Uh, and you want to go to, uh, uh, we want to be able to get to the um, uh, uh, settings. Okay, so we'll come up here, uh, File, User Preferences. And we'll come down here. I believe it's edit when you look at Blender 3.0. Uh, and the screens will look a little bit different, but you're looking for the sound settings. You want to make sure that you set uh, sound to jack. So you want to be using jack. Now, one quick thing about this. I am on Pipewire. Um, I'm not sure that I even have jack installed on this system. I may have uh, taken it off at one point. Uh, I have Pipewire installed, and Pipewire has now become default for most uh, Linux distributions. Uh, I have it installed on this one uh, manually because by the uh, time of 22.04, Ubuntu Studio 22.04, uh, they were not doing that by default. However, the latest version of Ubuntu Studio does have it in there by default. Uh, so I um, have Pipewire enabled manually, uh, but Pipewire is an emulation layer for Jack and Pulse Audio. So you don't even have to have Jack and Pulse Audio installed. In fact, it may be better, particularly for Pulse Audio, if you don't have it installed on your system, because you don't want it to interfere with Pipewire's uh, emulation. Pipewire emulates so well. It's, it's just a very good seamless emulation and you don't have to do anything in terms of back-end settings for Jack. Uh, Pipewire will take care of it. All you do is you open up the applications and they work. They just work uh, straight out of the box. So uh, that's what we've done here and we need to get to the video sequence editor in 2.7. Uh, you do this uh, 2.79 blender. You do it by selecting here and then going down to video editing and the screen that you will get looks like this. Uh, or something like it. There'll be a sidebar that could be open over here. Uh, we're not going to need that. I'm just going to close it out. Uh, and I don't need to have this window either. So I'm just going to drag uh, this window over. Uh, actually, the way you do this is you grab in the corner 
and you drag and drop. I just need to see this right here and I need to see my uh, sequencer on the bottom. Uh, what I want to do is I want to dr drop my footage into this, but before I drop my footage, let me show you the footage I'm working with. So I've got a couple of videos here. The very first one is the original. This is the movie that we're scoring to, uh, titled Rays, and I actually made this vi uh, a little movie, short film, from uh, some clips from Pixabay. So these are Stingray uh, uh pieces of footage, uh, little clips of stingrays that I sequenced together into a movie and I color corrected them so they matched a little bit better and you can see that there's stingrays moving throughout uh, these frames and at the very end we end with a shark, right? So this is the movie. Now I have another version of this which is uh, has time code. So I uh, imprinted the time code into this using Blender. That's what I use for video editing all the time uh, and uh, we'll open this with uh, uh, VLC as well. And you can see my time code is down here. Now, time code, as I said in a previous uh, tutorial, is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. It's 24 frames per second. So we're on the second second, 20 second frame. And when this gets to frame 24, we go to the next second. And it starts over at zero. So the frames up to 24 tell us where we're at in the next second. And you can use this to spot hit. So for example, let's say we want to do a hit at this point here where this ray comes into frame, which will be 19 seconds and 14 frames. So we would we would calculate for 19 seconds, and then we would go on the second half of that second, so past frame 13, there's only 24 frames uh, per second here, uh, and then we would approximate what beat we would want that to be on through some calculation. We don't have to do this though, with the process we're going to use today. What I want to do is I want to take this low resolution print that has a time code on it and I'm going to drop it into my uh, Blender project. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is starting at frame zero. So depending on your version of Blender that you're using, you want to set the beginning of the project not to one, which is what it is by default, but to frame zero. Uh, we want our time to sync at frame zero because this is where um, it will sync with um, MuseScore uh, through Jack. So we want this to go to frame zero. We'll move our clip over. And then the second thing we want to do is make sure that the project lasts for the duration uh, of our clip. So if I click out here, out to the end of the project, we'll advance until we get to the last frame. And here we have the last frame. And I'm going to set the end frame for... 2442, four, two, which is right here. <clears throat> so I have my 2442nd uh, frame. That's the end of the project. The last thing I need to do uh, is I want to make sure that we have, get over here to the beginning again and we'll decrease the size. Uh, I want to make sure that we have this set to synchronize. The way you do that in Blender is you have to come down here to playback and you select uh, uh, audio AV sync. So I hit AV sync and now what will happen is when this plays back it will now synchronize to any audio without stopping for a frame count. It will play and skip frames if it has to to keep everything in line. Okay. So now when I play this back uh, it will drop frames as needed to make sure that this is synchronizing to audio. <clears throat> now what curiously what's happening is watch what happens if I uh, uh, if I bring this back down to um, uh, MuseScore. So if I come back to MuseScore and I bring a blender out here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top of my blender uh, project uh, up on the margin in Linux. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to come to more actions. I'm going to set this to keep above other windows. So what will happen is that this window will stay above all the other windows and that way I can uh, scale this down. So I'm going to scale down my project. I'm going to bring my channel size down. In fact, I don't even really need to see this. What I do need to see is I need to see my playback down on the bottom and I need to see my um, uh, strip timing. So I'm going to take this window and I'm going to drop it down onto the other one. So what I'm looking at is just the video. I'm going to scale this down so it's as small as I can make it. And then I'm going to uh, zoom in, so I'll just hit the scroll wheel out. And now what will happen is whenever I hit play, 
in either application, if I hit play over here, you can see I'm synchronized. Now the nice thing about this setup is all I have to do is save this file. If I come up here to file and then I save it, uh, and I save it to the location where I save my MuseScore file, all I have to do is click on that file and it will open it up and it'll be like this. It will already be synchronized and ready to go. I don't have to do any setup again. I can just save these projects in the same location and they will always work. So let's uh, maximize our uh, MuseScore file. And uh, just to kind of prove a couple points here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the beginning and I'm going to select the very first measure and we'll uh, put a quarter note in there and I'm going to put a time signature in, or rather a tempo. So I'll add text, tempo marking, and we'll pick kind of a random tempo marking. Let's say we're going to go uh, 162 beats per minute. Okay, 162. And uh, if I hit play, you can see that I'm synchronized with my video and I can see my time code exactly the way it would be. Um, likewise, uh, I can uh, actually, let me if I scale this down again, I can, um, if I get in here, and I'm going to raise this up, I can actually pick any point, raise this up again, I can pick any point and then hit play from here. Uh, and let me let me scale this down a little bit too. If I right button on this, I can go to header, collapse menus, and now I can see a little bit better. Should be able to see my playback. So if I hit play, watch watch here in the timeline. You can see that it will pick up wherever I hit on my timeline. If I go back here and I hit play. It now synchronizes with MuseScore exactly in the same spot. If I go forward on MuseScore, if I go up here to this beat and I hit play in MuseScore, you can see that it will jump ahead. Now, I, I have found that this feature works really only best with Blender 2.79 and before. 2.5 to 2.79. Blender 3.0 does not synchronize <clears throat> quite this well. You can pick any point in the in Blender and hit play, and it will synchronize with the uh, MuseScore file, but it doesn't work in reverse. It doesn't seem to do that very well. But Blender 2.79 does. So again, this is readily available from uh, Blender's um, web page. So let me just open this up so I can see my uh, controls here a little bit better. And we'll just slide this up. So now I can get to the business of uh, spotting some cues. Uh, let's go back here and find a spot where we have a cue. Uh, before I was interested in that ray, let me just zoom in here. This is quite seamless. Uh, again, I can just save these files and just click to open them up directly from the folder that I save them in. And now I can see my whole timeline. And they will automatically load up. So I'm going to go forward and scrub, and, and I want to hit this spot right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right before that, and then I'm going to hit play from Blender, play the animation back. But I'm going to watch here and see which measure uh, I see this uh, a cursor show up on. So I'm right here. Let me hit that again. I'm right here in this measure right here. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this to quarter notes, and I'm just going to uh, uh, put a, a note in fact, what I'll do is I'll go to the first quarter note and hit play, and I'll dial this in. You can see if I start from this first quarter note, it seems to happen actually later in the measure. So I want to actually spot out here probably to beat number four. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add a note right here on beat four, and I'm going to play this back. So I'm going to go over here to a, an earlier moment and hit play. And I'll watch my movie. And you can see that my note hits when that uh, ray comes into frame right there. And I could tweak this or move it. If I like it here, that's fine. If I want to move it a beat, I can. Now, the next thing I can do is, as I'm creating my map uh, uh, a hit by hit, I can metrically alter my music so that this hit is in a stronger place if I want to score that way. Um, for example, if I want this to be in a stronger beat, uh, one thing that I might do is uh, come over here to my time signatures and select a um, on an earlier measure, try to get to a place where this will hit uh, more accurately on a downbeat right there. So I could steal a measure as a 3-4, 
uh, and then this would be the next downbeat. And I can do that really anywhere if I want to. Um, let's try that. Let's do this. If I select 3, 4, and I'm just going to drop it into the middle. Let's say that's the first major hit I have after the um, after the start of the picture. Then I'm going to uh, put a 4, 4 measure right here. So the very first measure is 3, 4, and this is kind of just a starting note will sneak in here, and that's how I'll treat the cue. So that when I arrive on this point after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I have three solid measures, and on the very next phrase, or three solid phrases, on the next phrase, I'll have that hit without really changing meter. Uh, let's see if that works out. I'm going to go to a previous measure and hit play. And it's exactly where it was. So you can use meter uh, to kind of alter your uh, location of the beat to put it in exactly the right spot. This is a really, really great way to work without having to do all the mathematics. You can kind of feel it out by using the uh, time uh, line over here and uh, starting and playing uh, really from either program. The, the master playback is uh, uh, two-way uh, whenever you use Blender and MuseScore in this way. So uh, just a quick tip for you about uh, uh, scoring to picture from MuseScore 3.6 using that jack transport into Blender. Again, this works with Blender 3.0 uh, uh, and, and on. However, I found that the older versions of uh, Blender, the previous iteration of it, uh, does a little bit better in terms of the reverse sequencing. Uh, whenever you're playing from Blender, it, uh, it uh, does uh, the timeline synchronization a little bit, little bit more accurately. Uh, otherwise, the playback is dead accurate from starting from the beginning, or if you're starting from anywhere on uh, Blender. You can use Blender to find your spot uh, using uh, Blender 3.0, and then uh, use that to set your time hits in uh, MuseScore. So, and with that, that is how you synchronize uh, using uh, MuseScore 3.6 and Blender through the Jack Transport. Uh, now, in this case, using Pipewire emulation. Very, very easy. Very straightforward. Just save the project files in the same place, and you're good to go. And it's permanent. Uh, you don't really have to do any setting up again after that. You just open them up, hit play in one of them, and everything will uh, line up exactly right. Good luck with that, and happy mixing.